Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET New Corporation. In this brief video, I'm going to show you how to convert a .NET Nuke website running on SQL Express to actually run on a full version of Microsoft SQL Server. Now we're going to be using SQL Server Express 2008, but the same steps can be followed to move from SQL Express 2005 to SQL Server 2005. And we're going to be moving from SQL Express 2008 to SQL Server 2008. So briefly, we'll talk about what SQL Express actually is, what it provides. Then we'll go through how to back up the existing database running on SQL Express. Then we're going to take that backup and restore it onto SQL Server. Then once we've restored the database, we need to go ahead and configure .NET to be able to connect to that new database. So SQL Express is a free version of Microsoft SQL Server. It has some limitations. I believe the database size can only be 4 gigabytes. There's a limit to the number of connections that can be made to that database as well. And it actually comes as the default installation for .NET Nuke. So if you install .NET Nuke out of the box using the automatic install, and you have SQL Express running on that local machine, it will attach the .NET Nuke database to that local copy of SQL Express. Now, typically, a local copy of SQL Express will run and have the .NET Nuke database inside of the .NET Nuke folder. And in my case, that's in a folder called Websites on my C drive, and then a folder called .NET Nuke Demo.com, which is our actual website. And then within that folder is an app data folder. And inside of here is the database for our .NET Nuke database running on SQL Express. So what we want to do is we want to be able to bring this database over into a full version of SQL Server. Now this website is currently running .NET Nuke Professional 5.6.0. It's a fresh installation of that particular install. Now we can confirm that it's running on SQL Server Express by opening up the web.config file, which is in the root of the website. And we can see there's two connection strings that we're concerned with in here. It's a connection string here called add name and then site SQL Server. And we see the data source is dot slash SQL Express. That means it's running in the local copy of SQL Express. And what it actually does is it attaches that database in the data directory, app data, and the file name being database.mdf. Now there's another SQL connection string as well, a couple of lines down in the app settings section. Now this is for older .NET Nuke modules that use the older format for connection strings. So when we make a change, we're going to have to change it twice. But we can see that website is running on SQL Express. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make a backup of that database and then restore it into our full version of SQL Server. Well, what I have open here is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And you're typically going to use this tool if you're trying to connect to a SQL Server. You can also download the free version called Management Studio Express. Now, when I logged into Management Studio, it connected to my local SQL Server, not the SQL Express copy. So what we want to do is we actually want to connect to the local SQL Express. So I'm going to do a file and connect Object Explorer. And then I'm going to come in here and type in the server name. Well, we saw the server name was in the web.config file as dot slash SQL Express. And I'll go ahead and connect to that. Now you can see in my object explorer on the left side, we now have two database connections, one to our full version of SQL Server, one to the local Express copy. If we expand the databases node under the Express copy, what you're going to see is that you will not find the .NET Nuke database. Now this is because of the way .NET Nuke attaches the database into SQL Express. It doesn't add it into the engine, but it is running within that engine. So we have a couple options here. We can actually take those MDF files in the LDF or the log file for the existing SQL Express database and pull those into SQL Server and just attach to those in our full version of SQL Server. But what we're going to do is we're going to go in and back up the database and then use that backup to do a restore into our full version. Now in order to do a backup here from SQL Express Management Studio, I need to come in and we need to right click on the databases node and choose attach. Now for attach, we're going to need to add a file and we're going to point to those local files for .NET Nuke. So we saw that those were on my websites folder in a folder called .NET Nuke Demo.com and then within the app data folder. So I'm going to choose that database.mdf file. Now, when you try to go ahead and attach to that database, because our website is currently running, 
SQL Express will not allow us to connect another connection in there. So we get an error message here. Now what we're going to want to do there is we're going to go ahead and simply turn off our website in the meantime. So I'm going to go ahead and load up IIS Manager. You can load that by going to your start menu and typing in INET MGR. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find the website .netnukedemo.com and I'm going to go ahead and stop the website. Now I'm also, just to be safe, going to go into the application pools in IIS Manager and stop the application pool. Now that should kill the connection that .NET Nuke currently had to that MDF file. And if we come back over to SQL Express, click OK, and then click OK again, we can actually connect to that database. Now we're doing this within SQL Server's Management Studio, so let me pull that back up. So now that we've attached the database into SQL Express's Management Studio connection, we can go into the database, right-click on the database under the Databases node. We're going to choose Tasks. We're going to choose Backup. Now we're going to go ahead and add a backup file into the destination location down below. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it into just a temp folder on my C drive, and I'll call it .NET Nuke Demo .bak. Now if you attempt to put it in the root of the C drive, you'll likely get an operating system permissions error, so that's why I went ahead and just put it into a temp folder. Now go ahead and click OK, and you can see our temp folder and our file name listed here, and we'll simply click OK. That will perform the backup of our database. So we get a message here, it tells us the database is backed up. Now what we need to do is we need to go back to our full version of SQL Server, which is still open here in the Object Explorer, and I'm going to come in, I'm going to right click on the databases node, and I'm going to choose Restore Database. Now I'm going to restore the database and I'm going to call it .netnukedemo.com. Now what you call the database is completely up to you. Now I'm going to come in here and choose from device. And we need to point to that backup file that we created. Well, that was on the C drive in a folder called temp. So I'm going to point to .netnukedemo.bak. Click OK. Now I actually performed the backup twice. Uh, you only saw it once in the video here. So I'm going to choose the second backup. And from there, we can go ahead and choose any other options we'd like to define if we want to choose where the files are going to go. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave it as is and click OK. Now what that does is that takes that SQL Express backup and restores it into SQL Server 2008. Now I would need to refresh my node here. And you can see .netnukedemo.com shows up in my database options. If we went in there, we would see all of the files or database tables that get created within .NET Nuke. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to configure our database so that we can connect to it from our web.config file. Now I'm going to do that with simply changing the uh, permissions for the network service account. So I have that .NET Nuke demo.com website running under an application pool using the network service identity. So what I can do is I can come into my logins under security in SQL Server. I'm going to right click on that NT Authority Network Service Account, choose Properties. And from within here, I'm going to go to the User Mapping section on the left side, and I'm going to choose that .NET Nuke Demo Database. Select that, scroll down to the bottom, choose DB Owner, and then click OK. Now we've just gone ahead and told the database server that that network service account should have access to that particular database. Now because I already have the web.config file open, I'm going to switch back over here to that. And we're going to go ahead and change our connection strings at this point. So our connection strings need to be changed in two locations. We pointed those out at the beginning of the video. Our data source is going to be just a single period because I'm using a local copy of SQL Server, not running under an instance name. SQL Express was running at period slash SQL Express. Now we are going to use integrated security. So it is set to true. And then from here, we'll go ahead and remove the other information that's provided here that is specific to the SQL Server Express string. Now we will type in a name here, database equal. And then the name of our database was demo.com. Now from there, we can go ahead and copy that connection string, everything within the quotes and replace the connection string down below with the same information. 
just everything within the quotes there. So we go ahead and save those changes. We should be able to then go back to our website. Now, if we try to refresh the website, we're going to get a message that we can't actually load the website. That's because we have our application pool stopped. So I need to go into my application pool in IIS, start the application pool, do the same thing since I stopped the website as well, and then we'll go back and try to reload our website. Now, if we do a, a refresh here, you might get a cached version of the website back. So I did a control refresh. And we can once again see the website loads up here. Now, what we would want to do is we want to test to make sure this is actually running on SQL Server 2008. So we can log in with our host account. And because I actually haven't logged into this website before, it's going to tell us we need to change the password. We don't actually have to do that with the host account. You should in a production website. But if we now come into the host dashboard page, from the dashboard page, we can click on the database server tab or option on the left, and we can see that it's running on database version 10.0.2531.0 SP1 developer edition. So it's running the full version of Microsoft SQL Server. Now, what ended up happening is it put the database files within our app data folder. And that's just because we didn't choose to tell it to put it somewhere else. So wherever you would normally put your database files, you can put them there. Now, by putting them into the app data folder, if we take a look at that folder again, you can see they show up here. And that makes it very easy to back up the website and the database at the same time. But typically, you would not put them into that app data folder. So we now have our .NET Nuke website up and running on SQL Server 2008. We could go ahead and remove the old database files for the SQL Express instance that was there. But you can see how easy it is to go ahead and change from SQL Express to a full version of SQL. Keep in mind that you probably cannot go from SQL Express 2008 to SQL Server 2005. You, to go from SQL Express 2008, you would need to go to SQL 2008. But I believe you can go from SQL Express 2005 to 2005 and 2008. Now, if you'd like more information about our .NET Nuke training, please feel free to check out the training page under the Resources tab on .NETNuke.com, where you'll find links to free videos and some of our upcoming schedules of instructor-led training. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke. Thanks for watching the video.